So in this book, uh, I argued that uh, there's enough evidence to rewrite the past in a much more intertwined way by foregrounding multiple contacts between places that had previously assumed, been assumed separate or self-contained. And I also think it's necessary to improve the theories and concepts that will help us shape architectural history theory and criticism as a discipline modeled on a non-Eurocentric humanism and global justice. So if I just give uh, you a very uh, short um, capturing of the argument in a nutshell, so um, this book offered uh, a way to understand global circulation of architecture that extends the notion of translation beyond language to visual fields. It demonstrated particularly the intertwined uh, histories of residential architecture in Germany and Turkey between 1920s and 50s. So it had a uh, relatively uh, small um, focus, uh, but the theoretical Im ambitions were bigger, I, I would say. Um, so by and multilateral international transportation of not only people, but also ideas, photographs, images, uh, objects, furniture, information, and technologies. So by and lateral uh, international transportation of these things from one place to another pro uh, generates processes of change that I define as translation. In other words, translation, according to me, takes place under any condition where there's a cultural flow, of, whether of people, ideas, images, and so on, where there's a cultural flow from one place to another. It is the process of transformation during the act of transportation. This is the like, shortest definition I came up with. And, and I think the work of theory doesn't end, but starts here because it's necessary to establish a terminology of different types, modes, items, channels, agents, ideologies, and qualities of translations. Uh, so the book, uh, in a way, opposes the mainstream perception of lingual translation as a second-hand copy. It demystifies the concept of the original, in other words, and it also opposes the conventional belief of translation as a smooth bridge between cultures. It brings out inequalities, tensions, psychological anxieties uh, in this uh, process. Uh, and these are some of the uh, terminology, part of the terminology that was important to me, it was important for me to develop a criteria of discussing these different works uh, with terms such as appropriating or foreignizing translation, I try to put the ethics of translation between translatability and untranslatability into conversation. And I also try to advocate um, for the future of translation as an act uh, to promote a new culture of translatability from below for a truly cosmopolitan ethics. So this is uh, the argument of the book in a nutshell. But today's talk is inspired by two recent artworks uh, that were done in around 2010. Uh, which uh, were translations of the two significant buildings uh, that were very important to me in the book. Uh, so I will be talking about these artworks, but also referring to the two buildings that were very important for me in the book. And these artworks, at least one of them, uh, invite us uh, to think about uh, alternative notions of time inherent in competing theories of writing a global art and architecture history. So my talk practices an unusual historical narrative, I should say, uh, by telling the intertwined uh, stories of uh, these five uh, different artifacts, uh, which are, some of them are historically overlapping, their durations are out of phase, uh, and I'll tell these stories in a spiraling way uh, rather than a, in a chronological order. 